Hi, I'm Bill Schneider, Sports Information Director at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Welcome to another captivating edition of Bulldog Blitz. We can call this Showdown Saturday as Hines and Gulf Coast battle for the MACJC title. Of course, we're coming off the big homecoming win over Cahoma. Uh, put that one in the rearview mirror quickly, Coach, and looking ahead to a pretty tough Hines team. Yeah, you know, uh, Hines has an outstanding football team. Uh, very. Uh, very explosive on offense. They've got a lot of weapons. Quarterback can run and throw and a lot of dangerous receivers and a, a running back that uh, is quick and explosive defensively. Uh, they're a swarming team that, that uh, creates a lot of turnovers. They uh, they lead the league in interceptions, gained. Uh, so a very opportunistic uh, football team, uh, excellent kicking game. So, you know, Hines definitely presents a, a, a great challenge for us, but it's one that we're looking forward to. And there you go. We'll look forward to that Heinz game in a few minutes. But right now, we'll jump back in the Bulldog Blitz time machine and go back to the Centennial homecoming game against Cahoma. We're still riding the, uh, the usual time machine, Coach. The other one, I'm still having problems with the paperwork, but we're going to get that set before we play. So instead, we'll take a look back at that Cahoma game. You're watching Bulldog Blitz here on WLOX. For 100 years, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College has been the choice for higher education in South Mississippi. We're proud of a century of excellence from academics to athletics. Gulf Coast Community College has made a positive difference in my life and continues to make a positive difference in people's lives every day. Come join us for our centennial celebration and participate in the exciting activities we have planned. It's like this and so much more. They fake the handoff, now going over the middle. That pass is tipped and caught by Javon Bell at the 22, out to the 24 for a Bulldog first down. Hatton had to thread the needle. Javon kept with it and gets the Bulldogs out of the shadows of their own goalpost. Hatton looks right. Throws it to Javon Bell, middle screen, huge hole for Bell across the 35 out to the 38 yard line. That's gonna be a Bulldog first down. So two big pass plays from Hatton to Bell moves the ball for Gulf Coast. Hatton, plenty of time to throw wide open is Trevante Thomas. Trevante Great may job. take it across the 15, across the 10. Touchdown Bulldogs, 48 yards. He told me the other day I hadn't got a touchdown yet. <laughs> Where well, yeah, they go, Trevante, the Bulldogs on the board. And, and they're down there celebrating. With they're, they're proud for him. He's made some clutch catches for us this year. They set that up with Bale, putting him down on a fly pattern, and double coverage went with Bale. The safety opened up. They fake it to him. Now going over the middle, pass is caught by Freddie Boggs. He's down to the Cahoma 20, and that'll move the chains. A 30-yard pickup, and that's one of the first big catches we've seen in a while from Freddie. He's been doing a lot of blocking. Now he helps out in the passing game. The jumbo package in the game. Hatton takes the snap, gives to Reggie Matthews. Huge <laughs> hole on the right side. Touchdown, Bulldogs, 13-0. Well, the Bulldogs line that time took over. When you got that much beef coming out of the backfield. So stay away that guy and sit there and hold him. Right, he has nowhere to go. Parker takes a low snap and hammered as he throws it, passes. Picked off in the end zone, picked off by Willie Burrows, brings it out to the 10, run out of bounds at the 15. So the pressure up the middle forced the bad pass and the Bulldogs stop the drive. Willie Burrows standing right there, making the play, and Gulf Coast will get it. First and 10 from their own 18. Play action, Parker tipped over the middle, passes, picked off by Brandon Keel, and another turnover by the Bulldog defense. That's two today. Keel was right where he needed to be, and that stops a Cahoma drive. Anthony Underwood, the long snapper. Snap is down, kick is on the way. Plenty of distance, and it is right down 
Pine Street. Right down past. How about that? Kick. Otis comes up to take it at the 35. He's going to return it. Breaks a tackle across the 40. Across the midfield. He's got some room across the 30. He's gone. Otis to the 15 and dragged down at the 10. A great punt return that time by Otis Jacobs. The wall set up beautifully on the left side. The Bulldogs have a chance to cash in here before halftime. I thought he had it. I thought he was going to turn it back up and take it in, but a great return. Good blocks he picked up. Had a good seam on the near side. Back to action. Wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Javon Bell on the slant. Easy pitch and catch from Clint Hatton. It's 23 to nothing just before halftime. That's, Too easy. That's so pretty. I, I, I tell you, he runs such a pretty route. Hatton throws such a pretty ball. Now Parker in trouble, sacked back at the 48 by Durrick and Centimore. Nobody thought about blocking him, and that's not a good decision with this cat. Bulldogs show blitz, come out of it. Rolling left is Parker. Now he's in trouble, and now he's dragged down at midfield. Ball is loose and recovered by Wade Wells. The sack by Packer, the recovery by Wells, and that shuts down the drive. On third and two, and Jumbo, Reggie Matthews, touchdown Bulldogs. He bulls his way in from 10 yards out, and there's the kill shot we were looking for. You know, right then, Bill, he's a little bit outside his five years uh, five yard zone. It was just inside the 10. Will Scott the hold, snap is down, kick is on the way, and it is good. Coach, get a shutout over uh, Cahoma on homecoming. So you got to love that. It's one of those we were a little worried about them, even though they were winless. But uh, once the offense got going, the defense played great. Uh, things came together. Pretty solid win. It was. It was a good good win all the way around. Uh, you know, offensively, we were able to move the football, had some explosive plays that uh, gave, us, you know, gave us a chance to score some points. Defensively, uh, you know, anytime you can get a shutout, you got you got to be pleased. The thing I was most pleased with is we never gave up the big play. You know, uh, you know, Cohoma was able to, you know, they moved the football a little and got some first downs, but uh, defense did a great job of of holding them and uh, either creating a turnover or putting Cohoma in a bad situation, getting them off off track, putting them in a third and long uh, kicking game. You know, Pontius was perfect on his on his field goals, which was which was good. We got points every time we were down there. Uh, and then Otis had the big uh, punt return right before the half, which, which gave us points. So, uh, you know, the kicking game really came through for us as well. So I, th I think total team victory, defense, offense, and special teams all really contributed to this, this great homecoming win. We've had our injuries. Yeah, every year you have a few of those. But as far as that goes, seems like we're a as good as we can be health-wise heading into the stretch run here. Yeah, you know, we've got, we've got an issue or two that, that, that we're dealing with. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely – uh, definitely, we've been in worse shape before at this time of the season. You know, th this year has been a year w w with injuries uh, that we have had to deal with more than, than probably some in years past. But uh, right now, as, as far as knees and ankles and shoulders, we're in, we're in pretty decent shape, which is, which is good. Uh, and we need to continue to, uh, to, to, to get healthier. You know, we were able to uh, rest. Chris Payne this past week, he didn't play at all against, against Cohoma, so we should have him back at, at, at full speed. Brandon Keel uh, played against Cohoma and uh, had a good week and was able to make it through without regressing any uh, on his knee. He's been, been a warrior and been battling through some, some things there. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I was pleased. Uh, Trevante battled through a, a little growing pull this past week and played, played really well. He made some plays again. Uh, you know, I was really pleased with the, the, you know, our receivers really, really stepped up and, and made some plays. Clint threw the ball extremely well and we had, had good protection up front. So, uh, you know, I think we wound up with 500 and something yards of offense. Uh, we rushed for three something and threw for 220 something. And you know, Bill, ever since that week, I guess it was three or four weeks ago, you, you, we talked about the explosives. This week we had 11 explosives. So you know, we've we've gone from three, two and three explosives a game 
to the last couple of weeks we've been in the double digits, and that's been the difference in our offense. We need to keep that going. Definitely, and uh, we go to 7-1 and one on the year and uh, stayed at 5-0 and oh in the South Division. That will be tested this week as Hines comes in, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Coming up after the break, another player profile segment on Bulldog Blitz. But right into the break, we'll take a look at last night's scores and the standings as we wrap up the regular season in the MACJC. You're watching Bulldog Blitz here on WLOX. At Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, it's like this. We've prepared generations of students for careers and for life. You have options that benefit your busy lifestyle while earning a degree, working, and enjoying time with family. Career and technical courses are offered evenings and weekends and in hybrid or online formats. Apply online and check the availability of financial aid and scholarships. Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, celebrating excellence for 100 years. And welcome back to Bulldog Blitz. Each week on our show, we take a look at some of our sophomore players. This week, we'll go to the defensive line and check out Darrington Centimore. I started at Alabama for two years. I was ready shirted and I helped, you know, participate in the uh, winning program over there. And then my second year, I played in like 10 games. Now Parker in trouble, sacked back at the 48 by Derrick and Centimore. Nobody thought about blocking him, and that's not a good decision with this cat. I feel like I'm developing, I'm learning new stuff. Uh -huh. You know, we've got a great coaching staff over here. They teach us great technique, you know, Coach Campbell, you know, he's a, he motivates us, you know, on and off the field. He's a great person, you know. It's hard work, you know, you have to come every day, full focus, dedication to, you know, program, you have to be committed, you know. You have to know what to do on and off the field. This is a hundred percent. And Coach Centimore came here uh, from Alabama, and right off the bat, you saw in spring practice, this guy gets down in, in a stance, and this one of those, you know, they talk about people having a motor. This this guy has a motor when he's on the field. He does. He plays extremely hard. And, uh, you know, he's got good size and strength and uh, brings a lot to the table. He's really been, you know, darrington has been a great player for us and uh, br brings a lot of intensity to that side of the football and, and, and does a great job uh, up front on defense. Gives us a pass rush. You know, we've played a lot of zone this year uh, with Darrington on one side and, and uh, Wade on the other and you got Willie in the, in, in the middle. Uh, we've been able to get some pressure on the quarterback using a three-man rush, which has allowed us to play some zone. Uh, Dinkins, uh, Conway, all those guys have done a great job up front of, of being able to, to, to pressure the quarterback, and, and Darrington has definitely uh, been a big plus for us. Certainly has. That defense will be tested this week as the Bulldogs take on Hines, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Heading into the break, we'll take a look at this week's NJCAA Top 10 poll. Bulldogs moved up to number seven and for the 84th straight week in that poll.
week, uh, we practice, we've been hitting PKs like crazy in case we got into a shootout. I got up there and I felt pretty confident, but it's still the state final when you know you have little butterflies going. But I just set it down and picked the side and hit it as well as I could. We always had it in us, okay? And we just we play 90 minutes. That's what I asked the girls to do. <clears throat> I'm out of voice right now from hollering at them, but we just never give up. Just kept playing. Um, forwards came through. Uh, we played with the team effort and came back with a victory. You just have to, it's all about keeping your composure. If you freak, you're going to mess up. So it's just taking a breath and putting it in. Feels good? It feels great. <laughs> And there you see both our soccer teams winning one to nothing over Pearl River. The men and the women both do that. First time ever they've won state titles in the same year, and they'll be playing in the region tournament right here at Perkinston this week. In fact, their games go on right after football. So, Coach, we got a little daily double. Uh, we could maybe lock up a South State. They could lock up a region after winning two states. So, championship stuff going on. It is. It's championship Saturday here at, uh, at Mississippi Gulf Coast. You know, congratulations go out to, to Coach Thrash and, and both of his teams. Outstanding achievement. I mean, can you – you know, the guy won a state championship, our, our men's team won, our, our ladies' team won. I mean, that's that's incredible and outstanding. And to be able to do it against, uh, you know, our great competitors uh, to, the, I guess, that team to the west of here against uh, that school was, was even better. So uh, so it was a great, great week last week for, for soccer. And uh, we need to keep that going this week in, in, in football and soccer, and, and let's lock up a, a region championship in soccer and a South State championship in football. I think that would be a pretty nice way to cap off the Saturday evening. And we'll take a look at how we're going to go about that here in one of our Chalk Talk segments. Went in, talked to offensive coordinator Chad Huff, and here's what he had to say about putting together the offensive game plan. Hi, I'm Chad Huff, Offensive Coordinator here at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Um, what I'd like to do with you today here is sh share a little insight on how we go about developing um, our offensive game plan here at Gulf Coast Community College. Um, there's a lot that goes in, and there's a lot involved, a lot of time and effort that's going into it, but we feel like the, the, what, we're gonna, what we do gives our kids the best chance and us coaches a chance to be successful. Uh, if you look right here uh, uh, to the right of me here, this is what we call our personnel board. This is our form Formations. Each week, what we like to do is we'll break down journey three to four films on a defense, and then we'll take those tendencies and we'll put them on the on, on the board here. Um, those are your normal down and distance. We start off with first and tens, and then we'll start off with our second and mediums. And um, so what you see up here is you'll see our these are our units: rabbits, light, open, and, and open and pro. Um, these are our formations and units. This is you can you see rabbits is our four, four wide, light units are two backs, three receivers, and then we'll get into a little tight end, three receivers, one back, and then a, a big majority of our offense is thrived on a tight end, two receivers, and two backs. And so what we'll do is we'll, once we break the opponent down, and Coach Campbell and I are in here, and we'll sit here and we'll, and we'll start, you know, how they're gonna line up the doubles, how they're gonna line up to us, um, and, and two backs, three receivers. What, how they're going to line up to us out of um, pro unit, pro twins with one with one running back. And um, you know, each week it, it's, it's different. You know, offensively, we one formation, one play may be good one week, and then obviously another week it could be totally different. And we spend a lot of our time sitting here figuring out what's going to give us the best chance to be successful on any given run play or any given pass play. And obviously, as you can see, different teams bring different pressures, um, and, and that's what you've got to have a plan for. You know, you may be able to throw the football out of this formation the week before, but then this particular week here, they bring a lot of pressure from different areas. You may have to change and adjust and formation it up to give yourself a chance to be successful. And then, you know, what's, this is our offensive menu right here. This is what we look at. This is 
where we develop basically our game plan um, by looking over at, at, at our formation board. Um, Coach Campbell develops his, obviously this is the run game um, you can look at and this is what Coach Campbell used for practice. Um, we're not going to obviously practice anything that we're not going to use during during the game so we'll look at what is our, what's going to be our best way to run inside zone, what's going to be the best way to run our power, what's going to be the best way to run our, our wide zone sweeps and counters and, and that's where we'll, we'll look at and get the best formations for that particular run and then that's what we'll script during inside all week you know we're not we, we, like I said earlier we may be a different totally different formation the week before but obviously this week depending on what the defense has given us it could change and we've got to make sure if we're gonna run the wide zone out of two backs three receivers that we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna look okay here's their defenses all right, we've got to make sure we give them a Sam at C or a Sam at B. We've got to make sure, Coach, you know, we, we're, we're doing a good job of giving them all the looks for that one particular play to, to be successful. And then we'll look at play action off the runs. Now, what's going to be our play action off the runs we're running this week, you know? Um, if we're going to be running a lot of power, then we're going to have some power play action. If we're going to run wide zone, we need some wide zone play action. And then we'll develop a play action menu off based again off our formations based off what we're going to run offensively and again using our our our, our, our formation board um, our tendency board we got to make sure that you know for our protection and like coach Campbell for those old linemen he, he does a great job of making sure that we give the quarterback enough time and enough space to, to give ourselves a chance to be successful then we'll move to our to our situational board, which um, obviously this would be our first and ten regular down and distance runs, which we've kind of talked, discussed, but we'll take those and you know what, Coach Campbell, what's your favorite runs? What you like to run here? So we'll make sure we put down our favorite runs, favorite formations, and our checks off of depending on what the defense is giving us. We may have one run that I run check um, here. First and ten passes, obviously the same situation. You know, play action, sprint out, some drop back, quick game, but stuff that we've been working all week. And, and it's looked good, and we've, and we've successfully executed the plays, then we'll make sure we put them on here. And welcome back to Bulldog Blitz. Well, as we said, showdown Saturday, Hines comes in, the same record that we have. In fact, uh, their only loss was East Mississippi like us, and they've been playing excellent football. We've beaten them six straight, but none of that really matters going into this weekend. These guys, uh, you know, we saw it in the Chalk Talk segment, and we also uh, looking over their numbers. Uh, their defense, they blitz all the time. Uh, their offense has big plays. They put up 59 points last week. Uh, this isn't going to be any picnic. No, it's not. A anytime you play Hines, uh, you, you got to be ready to go. Uh, Hines has great tradition. Uh, they've got a, a great program. Uh, Coach Gene Murphy is, you know, he's back out of retirement. I guess this is his third year back. You know, Gene had won a lot of championships before he went into retirement. Stayed away from football for a couple of years. Now he's back, and you see the resurgence. Uh, in Hines' program in his third year, he's got him in the playoffs and, and playing for a chance to, to win the uh, to win South. Uh, so they've got they got a lot of talent. You know, defensively they're they're big up front, very athletic. They'll have, you know, one of the biggest defensive lines. They've got a six six three thirty and a six three three twenty, and the, their DNs are tall and can run. Outstanding speed at linebacker. They've got a number four that they like to blitz off the edge. That's a great player. And then, you know, in their secondary is a, a ball hawk. Uh, ball hawking secondary. They've got one with seven picks, another one I think with four or five, and another one with, with three or four. So they've created a lot of turnovers, do a great job on defense. Offensively, uh, they've got some six four receivers that can fly. Uh, they've got uh, a lot of speed and explosion at the wide receiver position. A quarterback is very athletic, great decision maker, uh, and they're huge up front on the O line. They do a great job 
you know, coaching, uh, great schemes and uh, great athletes running them. So, you know, and, you know, what we have seen a lot this year, we, we you know, the, the, the kicking to me in this league has not been what it has been in some I think we right. we have been blessed. I think we've got the two best kickers in the league, bar none. Yeah, we've players. always kind of had the edge on special teams. We, we always have. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year's no different. We, we, we've got some outstanding, you know, an outstanding punter in Will, best in the league, outstanding kicker in Taylor, best in the league. Uh, Hines has, has a really good kicking game. They do a great job on their returns, do a great job on their coverage, and they've got an outstanding kicker as well. So, uh, you know, that'll be big for us. You know, each week we go into it with a special teams, uh, something. You know, this team's got a great returner. We've got to do a great job of covering them. This team's got a great job blocking kicks. Got to do a great job of holding them out. Well, anyway, this week, Hines, a uh, great kicker. Got kicks it deep. Uh, he will give us a chance. It won't be all these sky kicks, whip kicks. They're going to kick it deep and, and say, come on with it. So uh, let's give us a chance to uh, – we need to do a good job of blocking up front, and Otis will, will have a chance to get some returns. So that's going to be big for us. We need to do a great job of covering on our kickoffs and our punts because they are very dangerous in the return game. So a lot, a lot of big keys there in the kicking game as well. Yeah. And that game at 3 o'clock Saturday, you can watch on MGCCCBulldogs.com via streaming video or listen at 103.1 FM WOSM. Uh, as we said, going after the South Division title, if we could do that, it would be the fifth in the last seven years, and we'd also get a home playoff game in the first round. So that's big, too. You throw that motivation in there, you know, playing at home instead of having hit the road again, that's got to be, you know, there's going to be motivation anyway, but that's just one of those extra ones. It is. You know, you... I always go back to the old mantra, it's the most important game because it's the next game. If there is a lot riding on it, it, it like I say, it will give you the, uh, the South Division Championship for the fifth time in seven years. It, it gives you a chance to, to play at home the following weeks. So there's, you know, yeah, there is a lot of things riding on it. Uh, you know, biggest being that it's the next game and they're the next team you, you get the, uh, that you're blessed with the opportunity to get to play. And uh, so we, you know, we're excited about that. We're excited about, you know, we have talked about all year uh, you don't have to win a championship. All you got to do is win this one game. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you do that enough, you wind up playing. So we don't need to win. All we got to do is win one football game. And then all that other stuff is a result of having, having won one game. So we're down to a point now where you win one game, uh, you've won the South Division championship, you host the first round. All those are byproducts of taking care of business one game at a time. So that's, that's what we need to do is focus on – winning this football game and and then after that they'll name us champions and we'll get to play but, but what we right. got to do is focus on that all right good luck coach and we'll have that game of course next week we'll look back on that and we'll look ahead towards the playoffs for head coach steve campbell i'm bill snyder thanks for watching bulldog blitz have a great night and a great weekend